Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's time for a brand new set of mission inspiration art challenges over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. This year we're doing weekly challenges as opposed to bi-weekly, one every two weeks. Yeah, weekly. So there's going to be 52 throughout the year. So this is week number one. So let me turn over to my other camera and I'll show you the prompts and then I'll get on with my art journal page for this week. This is the first of the weekly prompts for 2024 for Mission Inspiration. So as you can see, it's a card in two parts. I've cut mine out and left a white border all the way around. But if you actually trim it to the edges of the image and then fold it in half, you can create your own Oracle card. And as there will be 52 throughout the year, you're going to end up with an Oracle card deck of 52 prompts that you can use time and time again at random or however you choose. So there's a graphical image on the right hand side with the word at the bottom and then there are some musings if you like, oracle insights if you like on the word itself. So the first word for 2024 is dawn. It's a new beginning. I thought this would be appropriate to start the year off. So it says embrace new beginnings and the promise of light. Like the sun rising, you're entering a phase of renewal and clarity. Release the shadows of the past. Welcome the dawn of new opportunities. Your path is illuminated with hope, inviting you to awaken to the beauty of a fresh start. There you go. So um, I've got, like I said, I've cut mine out and left a border all the way around because what I'm going to do is after I've done my art journal page each week, I'm going to stick the journaling card or the oracle card or the prompt onto the other side. And then I will do the next week's on this one. So after the full year's um, been put together, I'll be able to go back and check or go back and look to see what the inspiration was for each of the weeks that we've done. So let me pop the prompt card to one side for now. So this is my... Let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm working on. So this is a sheet of craft cardstock. So I will decide on a week to week basis what I'm going to be using. Um, but probably I'll do them in fortnight one. So I'll have two on each one that's going to go in my traveller's journal. So this is the size of the piece that I'm going to be working on throughout 2024 for the Mission Inspirations. Um, UK sizes, it's around about A5 um, in Imperial. It will fit within the 6x8 Traveller's Notebook. Um, so it's just slightly smaller than um, the 6 and slightly smaller than the 8. So 5.5, 7.5, between that anyway. So that's the kind of size that I want to work on. So let me just pop that to one side. This is a sheet of white cardstock. And what I want to do is I want to create... A, a sort of stencil, but not quite a stencil, um, a, an aperture, if you like, for creating a circle. Um, so and I think I'm going to do it at three and a half. So if you've never seen one of these before, this is a set of circle scissors, which um, I've had two or three versions of. Um, these ones were mum's, but since she's given up doing her crafting, she no longer wants hers so all you do is choose the size of the circle from the grid on there and then hold it down and whiz it around and sure enough it'll cut that size circle out of whatever you need so you can have the aperture or you can use that as a mask if you want three and a half inches is what i've done for mine so inside the lid as well you can unscrew that and there'll be a spare blade hidden in there as well. I'm not sure whether or not EK Success still do these or whether you can still buy the blades. Like I said, um, this is quite old. <laughs> but I just thought I'd give it a dust off. Right, so. I'm going to create that about there, but not to start off with. What I want to do is just kind of Put that 
there so I kind of know where I'm going with what paint I want to put down um, on the backdrop. So right, to start off with, I'm going to use some white gesso. And I've got some water just to one side. I did remember to get the brushes this time, although they are sitting in dirty water, but that's okay. We don't mind a bit of grunge, do we? And it's only gesso when all said and done. So grab some gesso and then I'm going to just create a nice kind of wash of gesso on there, not bothering about perfect white lines. I don't mind if it fades off. It's just a base in which to create our piece of art for the prompt. For week one, there we go. Week one, hey. So I'll get that dried. The white gesso's now dry. So what I wanna do is just add in some of those warm colors into the background. So I'm using DecoArt, the Americana, true red and I'm just going to put a couple of blobs down and I've also got coral so we are definitely working on that kind of warm palette today and I've just got a small brush and I'm just going to use the brushes to give some kind of loose brush strokes and then grab hold of the coral and start blending that colour in. So the red's kind of started to disappear a bit now so I think we need to introduce just a tad more of that red. while it's still wet. So I'll just feed it in, blend the colours together, just to get that kind of real nice blend. And we can keep adapting and adding more of one if we think it's getting darker in certain areas. So now I'm going to just change the direction of the brush. And bring it that way. Got a nasty lump there, I don't want that. That's not nice. Some brush strokes one way, some brush strokes the other. Nice kind of blend. But just while that's still wet, I'm going to just bring in a small amount of yellow. And I'm literally just going to take it from the top. And then I'm going to get it everywhere now. Let's see if I've got a piece of scrap. Oh, there we go. This one drops enough. I want some of those lighter colours kind of just showing through. But not so strong as they're overpowering. Just light, almost dry brush. Just 
Okay, let's get that dried off. All right, so now I'm going to come back in with that mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that down where I think I want it. And I'm going to lay that over the top just so I've got a relative decent position. And then come back in with that scratch paper. This time, get more of the yellow. And I have a Tim Holtz Distress Foam. Well, actually, it's not a Tim Holtz one. It's a, it's a cheaper version, but it's the same sort of thing. And I'm going to just load up the foam with the paint. And then just from the middle, I'm going to go around using the, the aperture as a stencil. While it's still wet, I'm going to grab a little bit of orange. And then I'm going to that moved a little bit. Just come in at the bottom. Like so, maybe just a little bit more. All I'm trying to do is just kind of blend the colour so it's not a perfect kind of yellow orb and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some white gesso and then just take a little bit of the white that we've got and add that just to my palette there and then pick some of that white up just work it in and then just try and keep the stencil in place. And then at this side, just add in a bit more of that white color, but just gently dabbing and blending away if we've got any circles showing. There we go, that should do. So when we lift that away, we don't have a, a complete yellow block, if you like, or circle that is just one solid colour. It's got some gradients in there, a little bit of detail, which is just kind of what we want. Or what I wanted anyway. <laughs> so once again, I'll get that dried. And then I'll be back. That's pretty much dry now. So again, I'm going to lay the white, that, that white circle over the top to create a mask. I'm going to come back in with the white gesso. And then I'm going to pick up some of the white paint and then add a little bit of water to it. Have to be quick before it all blends and all soaks into the um the paper <laughs> and then i'm just going to add those famous splatters to the background lift that up
dry that off. The splatters are now dry and when I was thinking about the word dawn, I always think of dawn chorus, birds. So that's kind of what my focal point is going to be for this art journal page. Is I'm going to have obviously the sun rising in the background, which is what we've got there. But it does look like possibly a, a moon on an alien planet as you're looking up. Those little dots in the background could definitely be stars. Um, or maybe not. That's just my my idea of fancy. So I've got my little bird image. So this is one I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. If you're one of my angels and you pop across to the angel only section on my website, um, obviously you will have your password to get access um, into the um, the angel only section, you'll find that I've given you a selection of my favourite birds from my collection um, for you to download and use if you wish. This being one of them. I really like this one. Okay, so that will go there, just breaking across the bottom of the moon, the moon, the sun. Yep, yeah. up there, like so, just that wing breaking in. Real basic composition with this today. I'm not doing anything ultra fancy or over the top or too involved. Let's grab some glue. A little bit of collage does you good. Oh come on don't tell me that's blocked. Even when you close it up look. There we go. a little bit of school glue, a bit of PVA will do. And like we said, just have that bird breaking into it. like so and then just because I like the colours in it does remind me of um, of the Far East I've got this little Chinese strip now um, now according to Google Translate it says I was born with the skills to succeed or something like that <laughs> I wanted to know whether I had it the right way up um, so I did Google Translate on it. That's the right way up. And that's pretty much what it says down there. Uh, the Google Translate app now, if you hover over a foreign language, it will literally replace the text on the screen with what the translation is. It's very, very clever. I was very, very impressed with it. So impressed, I said. Oh, that's impressive. Hello, little nippy. If you can hear little feet. Yes. What's up? Oh, is it that time in the afternoon, is it? <laughs> I think somebody wants his tea. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just add some glue to the back of that. I did think when I first bought these Chinese stickers, because I've got quite a few now, that they were actually stickers. They're not. There's no um, adhesive on the back which is a bit of a shame. So I'm going to put that just so it's breaking out of there like so. 
it's a very oriental feel to it which i really really like okay so while that's drying mr nip obviously wants his tea so i'll let that dry and then i'll be back in a few moments all right so it's been a few minutes <laughs> i've actually taken nipper out for a walk so we're back now and he's had his tea hello hey oh yeah hey, good lad be wanting to play again in a minute um right so i've got this set of quotes blocks uh, which is available on my website to download now there are 30 on here uh, now one of them just happens to be it's always darkest before the dawn so i'm going to cut it out and use it so there's all sorts of different little journaling quotes here which you can use for art journal pages and um, for junk journals for little envelopes or little journaling cards or whatever and i think there's some real cute little quotes and sayings a lot from movies there's a few from shakespeare plays midsummer night's dream and the tempest and merchants of venice and that kind of thing um particularly all that glitters is not gold um in fact actually, i don't even think that's one on there <laughs> i'm saying that so what i'm going to do is i'll just cut the tops and the sides off that one just to make it a little bit smaller Let's go around with a bit of a bit more distressy just because we can. I think that will do just nicely. Don't mind the fact that it's all that one side, or shall I just trim that off? Let's just trim it off. That's better. I like that. Although I don't just want to stick it down there like that. I'd like to stick it down with something else. So let's have a quick look and see if we've got anything that we can add to it. Just a small bit will do. Let's see what we've got on the craft card section. This is a little pad or ephemera I bought from Timu, used a couple of times in projects. Now this is just to give a little bit of contrast with the craft colour on the paper and also the red in the foreground <laughs> because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that like that so I might just remove a bit more of that for no other reason than just I like it. All right, let's get some glue on that. Add these two pieces together. That's better. Flip that. A little bit of glue there. cold out in case you're wondering yeah I think that just needed that just that little bit extra just there all right but also I just want to add a little bit more background texture but in the foreground so we're going to use the same distressing. This is a really, really old, old stencil. Um, 
dot fade i think is it a tcw oh, no i can't remember i've had it that long i just want to add a little bit of just a little bit in that background it's light without being too heavy Just enough, I think. I'm just going to go up and down. I didn't want to use the um, the ganache that I, I've been using recently because that would be way, way too dark. But I think that just kind of adds that little bit of extra <laughs> dimension into the background without being too heavy. And I think that that's it. I think I'm happy with that art journal page. It's got just the right amount, I think, of movement and the right amount of kind of interest to bring the eye across the page on a little visual journey. I think I'm happy with the way that is. So what I'll do is I'll flip that over, grab the glue. That will do, that will do. Like so, with a little bit of buckling, but that's okay. But instead of sanding it on the front, I'm going to sand it on the back here. So, and because I'm doing this before Saturday, today is Thursday, which is the 4th. There we go. So that is my first art journal page for the new weekly prompts, number one for 2024. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page based on the new weekly prompts for the Mission Inspiration um, Facebook group. Don't forget, if you'd like to join us for the art challenges this year, um, that's the URL on the screen, but there will be a clickable link in the description area below as well. So you just click on that, um, ask to join, answer the questions, and then as soon as I see it pop up, I can go in and then just approve your membership. And then you can join us. Um, each week I'll be adding the new prompt to the Facebook group, um, and there will be an archive on there as well, so you can go back if you've missed any and download all of the images throughout the year. So. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art journal page. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, then please do so. Because there's another 51 to come. <laughs> I probably, probably a few more as well. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel-only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.